G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a nice little fun tutorial in Grasshopper where we're going to look at using Voronoi packing in order to distribute points rather equally around an awkward shape. Um, so this actually came to me from a user request. So I'd like to thank um, Dev, uh, who is in touch with me quite regularly with Grasshopper and Dynamo related challenges. And he wanted to place some Enscape assets quite randomly on a surface based on a spline. Now originally we looked at using Dynamo, but I did find that Grasshopper just had some superior methods that could be used. Having said that, Dynamo could probably achieve the method I'm going to show you as well. Now in this case, um, to distribute points evenly around a surface, there's a few basic methods we can use, but each of them have a few problems related to them. One way is to distribute an equally spaced grid of points across the, the volume or the surface run an intersection and just take all the points that exist on the surface. Now the problem is you don't get a very organic result. You get quite a awkward looking grid um, that can look quite robotic or regular. Which in the case of um, assets like planting, uh, doesn't lead... So I've got a bit of cat hair in my mouth. That's what, that's what having cats does for you. Um, so in this case it doesn't achieve a very regular looking outcome. And the problem is that in this case, we're mostly dealing with what we would call a trimmed surface, um, which is actually why Dev came to me originally, because surfaces in Dynamo and other programs as well are often trimmed, which means that their domain is driven by what we call their ISO lines, which don't necessarily exist inside the surface extents. So typically you do need to have a NURB surface in order to have a UV that relates explicitly to the face of that surface. Now we can build untrimmed forms in Grasshopper, um, such as meshes, and divide them using special packages like Weaverbird, um, but these are quite complex to set up and the algorithms typically won't give you the type of result that we're seeking here. So another solution is to take that surface and use a populate 2D function instead to randomly put points inside that domain and again just collect the intersecting points. The problem in this case is that you often will get points that are too close to each other. So if you have a desired spacing, say you want to have maybe a meter around each bush in your surface, well in that case this might not work because you won't you don't have a guarantee you're going to have separation. So the solution we're going to look at instead is to pack the trimmed domain, generate some Voronoi cells in this domain, and then intersect the centroids instead. This will create a lot more separation between the points and they won't be as regular. But we're going to be using something a little bit more complicated here in order to make them more equally spaced because Voronoi by default in a standard surface isn't typically very equally spaced. But we can use what's called Lloyd's algorithm which allows us to resource the centroids of those Voronoi over and over again until we reach a relatively stable state where most of the centroids happen to be quite equally spaced. I'm going to be using a package for Grasshopper called Anemone in order to do this in order to loop my function a desired number of times. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into Rhino. Um, so I'm using Rhino 6 here and it's inbuilt Grasshopper. Um, what I'm going to do first is just generate a rather awkward uh, poly curve or spline that I can turn into a form to fill. Now you are going to have to make sure that the endpoint can be joined without crossing the base form, um, ideally. Anyway, I'm going to begin just first by placing down a pair of bifocals so that you can see the names of the nodes as I use them. We're going to begin by collecting our curve. So I'm just going to set this to my curve I've just generated. And I'm then going to be finding the endpoints of the curve because I want to connect the start to the end. So in this case, I'm going to generate a line by two points. And I'm just going to generate that line to cross those two points back together. I'm then going to have to merge these lines together. So I'm going to take this line and the other line. And I'm just going to turn off a few previews as I go. And now we do have a list of two curves. And we can now join these curves together. I believe, um, yeah, in that case you can also preserve the indices. But now we just have a single curve which we can turn into a surface just by feeding this into a surface node. So from a fairly irregular shape, you can create at least a closed form in, in most cases. In this case, it looks like I might, might have some limits on, I guess, how flexible my form can be to the point where it can actually generate a non-intersecting form. 
But we can see in this case that I can create it um, quite easily and it does update as well. Now what we can do with this surface is find its bounding box to assess its UV ISO, ISO, ISO line driven domain. So I'm going to create a bounding box in this case, just around this surface. Now because this is a flat form, the bounding box is actually going to be flat as well, so it is a surface in itself. So we can use this to populate 2D, and we can see now that I can actually do this. Now we don't actually technically need to convert this into a surface, you may just be able to just work with the bounding box to be honest. Um, so you might be able to bypass you know, a majority of that there just by not making it a surface and I believe we can still just generate the bounding box in the same way. So it's optional whether you just want to see that surface or not. Anyway with this bounding box we're going to populate this with a bunch of points using populate 2D and we're just going to populate this in as our geometry and I'm going to add a count so I'm just going to go 0, actually I'll go 1, 50, 100 just to create a number slider between those numbers just to dictate the number of points that I will populate in this area. I believe in this case that is the, the number of points and the seed and then you can add fixed points if you want to as well. Now what we're going to do is generate a Voronoi based on this. So we're going to take our points and we do need to create a bounding area from our box. So now we've created a a Voronoi grid, which might be enough for you to already distribute uh, assets across this grid already. But in this case, we are going to try and make it more even using a looping function. So what I'm going to need is a loop start node from the anemone package. And I'm going to need a few things here. In this case, I'm firstly going to need my data to begin my loop. I'm also then going to need a trigger if I want to restart my loop. And typically for a trigger, I use a button that I can just press to restart. We then need a counter for how many iterations we want our loop to go through. In this case, I'm gonna create a slider again. I'm just gonna say I wanna go from one up to 50, up to 100, so I can dictate a few stages in my loop. Now we've got the starting point for our loop, but we don't have the looping condition in this case. So what we're gonna do with our loop is we're gonna take our Veronois that we're generating each time I'm going to take an area node, which will give me the center of each Voronoi cell. Now currently our loop isn't doing anything, so we are going to need to actually make our loop connect in order to work. Um, I am going to generate another Voronoi, but this time I'm going to be using the center of that Voronoi. I'll then feed back my bounding box again to the same box. Note that everything still needs that loop, that loop to be connected to the end. But what I'm going to do now is actually get my end loop. So I'm going to get my loop end from the anemone package. And the data we're going to send through is our new centroids from our next Veronoi iteration. I'm then going to send this data back to my loop. And at that point you can see our looping function is working. And you can sort of see Lloyd's algorithm in play here. Notice that the cells are moving around and becoming more equal each time it iterates. Now I can obviously increase the number of iterations to make it go just a little bit longer again. And notice it sort of redistributes and reconfigures to try and find the most stable state that it can using Lloyd's algorithm. Now we can just hide the previews from our loop and just have a look at the preview on the back end of our loop instead. So I'm just gonna turn off all these previews and also my initial populate and Verono, just so I can have a look at the final outcome. And we're just gonna be viewing this outcome here. I believe you could also connect it to the very end as well, the data after the loop, so I might just do that. And I'm just gonna take my centers. And now when we reset our loop, we can see those points moving around based on the algorithm that generates the Verono cells. So pretty exciting and pretty cool to watch as well. Um, and maybe we might just add a few more points to our study. But you can see that Grasshopper is able to process this function quite well and quite quickly as well. Now we can also add a pausing condition in here as well. If I just add a, a false start toggle, um, which will essentially tell our function to pause or to run. So if I put this into false state and I run, but then I toggle it to true, it essentially pauses my loop 
midway through its run. And you may wish to do this just to make your session a little bit faster because loops can sometimes slow down the session just a little bit if they're doing a lot of things at once. Once you're happy with something, we can just proceed forward with the outcome of the loop. So in this case, I am going to have to find the closest point from each Voronoi centroid to the surface. I'm going to do this to determine which points aren't actually on the surface. So I'm going to get a surface closest point. And in this case, I'm going to take each centroid that we've generated and I'm going to compare how far away it is from our initial surface. So we will actually need that surface that we generated before. And we're going to find that the closest point of that centroid, and we, we would expect that any point that is actually on the surface, its closest point will be that point. But these points floating out here, for example, they're going to be closest to the boundary of the surface. Now, the great thing about the closest point node is it actually tells you the distance between that point and its new point. So we can check which, which ones of these are larger than a certain number, in this case, zero. So what I'm going to do is just get a smaller than node because we're going to find every irrelevant point and filter it out or cull it. So I'll take those distances and I'll just say which ones are uh, less than less than one. So actually we're finding all the ones that are on the surface in this case. And I can just apply this to what we call a cull pattern. It's sort of like a filter by Boolean mask if you've used Dynamo before. But we're, we're going to take in this case the pattern of whether it's smaller and we're just going to apply this to our centroids. Now if we turn off this preview, you can see we're just left with the points within our actual surface. Um, and what I can do as well, if I just visually want to see my Voronoi cells, is I can also apply this culling pattern to the Voronoi themselves. And now I can see that result. So what I might do now is just turn off my bounding box and turn off my surface. And now I should be able to unpause my loop. And then I might just quickly save this before I run it. But if I restart my loop, we can see those cells sort of getting closer to a stable state. And as they intersect with that bounded surface that we've determined by this poly curve, in this case, uh, they do either get filtered in or out of the final outcome. So we could use these centroids as a placement point for a planting asset. Let's say you're trying to create a set of bushes inside here by a certain radius. Now you can also apply radii to the Voronoi to target. So we could say in this case, maybe we're trying to target a radius of a meter. This can also allow you to apply a threshold to the spacing of the elements themselves. Um, but ultimately it's a nice little functional algorithm that's quite flexible. And as long as you have a form that's relatively simple to work with, you can see that Lloyd's algorithm is a very effective way of clustering and spacing points quite equally. Um, and the, the anemone package gives us a really interesting way to implement the algorithm. So quite interesting, and I hope this helps um, Dev solve his problem specifically, but also give you a fun new way to explore Grasshopper and algorithms. So the script um, that I've done today will be on my GitHub as always. Um, but if you're not already following and subscribing my channel, um, feel free to do so. I try to make videos uh, twice a week and I try to cover a lot of different software topics. So thanks for watching today and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care.